Hello everyone, this is Mr. Brain Junkie here, and today we'll be talking about an action comedy film called Kung Fu Hustle. Be ready for some spoilers ahead. Somewhere in the police station of Shanghai, a local mafia boss is beating up the police officers for arresting his beautiful wife while no one dares to retaliate. He leaves the building while shouting at the officers and walks towards the streets, but quickly notices something wrong as all their cars are missing. An army of rival gangsters from the Axe Gang appears in front of the group, surrounding the men, leaving them nowhere to run. The gangsters begin shooting at their rivals while the Mafia boss tries to run away, but one of the generals throws an axe at the running man and cuts off one of his legs, causing him to fall to the ground. The Axe Gang leader, Brother Sum, takes a weapon and begins dancing horrifically towards the Mafia boss, ignoring the man's plead for mercy while striking him repeatedly. It turns out that the gangsters pay the officers a lot of money to not interfere, and they continue to terrorize the town with their horrendous dances, killing everyone that stood in their way. In these chaotic times where the gangsters rule over the people, only a poor town like the Pig State Valley can live peacefully, as the gangs have no interest in their poverty. The entire place is owned by a landlord that seems to be drunk all the time, and terrorizes the people by flirting with them, regardless if the person is a middle-aged man or this unique-looking woman with extraordinary teeth. The truth is that no one can escape from his masculine charm except for his wife, the landlady, who appears to be angry all the time. Her hobby includes shouting at the tenants for their late payments and knocking out their most handsome men in the village. Somewhere in the outskirts of the village, Two mysterious men look upon the people and plans to unleash their evil schemes. They go into the town and begins to blackmail the handsome man for money, claiming that they're from the Axe Gang. However, their threats are not met with any fear as the villagers begin to surround the place in hostility. Realizing that he probably chose the wrong town to terrorize, the skinny man Singh tries to run away but gets stopped immediately by the landlady. The woman proceeds to hit him furiously with a slipper, causing the man to run in fear. Singh threatens to call for backup and throws a firecracker behind the walls, hitting someone as a result. Surprisingly, he actually alerted the general from the Axe Gang by blowing up the man's hat, and the gangsters walk into the town with anger, demanding to know who was throwing the bombs. Singh tells the man that it was one of the people inside, and the general proceeds to walk towards the landlady. The woman senses trouble and runs away in blinding speed, leaving all her tenants to fend for themselves. The situation is made worse when the handsome man tells the gang leader that he's not afraid of their threats, causing the general to walk forward, planning to strike him with the axe. However, the man is attacked by a mysterious force and knocked inside a barrel, breaking his spine and forcing the gang to call for backup. Very soon, an army of gangsters arrive inside the Pigstay Valley and begins terrorizing everyone who stands in their way. They take a young girl hostage and pours gasoline over her body, demanding to know the person responsible for killing the captain. After not receiving any response, the gang leader throws a lighter at the girl, but the attempt was stopped by a young man who claims to be the one responsible. The gangsters charge at him in fury, but he proceeds to counter using a barrage of kicks, knocking the criminals onto the floor. Suddenly, numerous men are knocked away by a powerful punch as the tailor appears from the crowd as well, fighting the enemies in order to help the young men. The gangs try to fight back by grabbing their guns, but before they can shoot, the weapons are destroyed as they're sent flying towards the walls. The restaurant owner named Donut charges out and begins attacking the gangsters using a stick, breaking their weapons and sending them flying backwards. The man's furious attacks conjures a storm where only agonizing screams of the criminals can be heard. When everything begins to settle, the gangsters are all defeated on the ground as they desperately try to get away from the town. The gang leader is furious after what happened and blames Singh and his brother for causing them great embarrassment as the two are not even part of the gang. Sam tells his man to kill them, but when the gangster throws the axe at the main character, he manages to escape right before the weapon hits. The gang leader is impressed with the man's skills and tells him to go kill one of the people from the Pig State Valley if he ever wants to join the Axe Gang. After leaving the Mafia's hideout, Singh lectures his brother Bong about being ambitious and tells him that they'll have everything if they can join the gangsters. Bong questions how they can kill anyone from the Pig State Valley as they all seem to be very powerful, but Singh reveals that he also knows Kung Fu ever since he was a little boy. Apparently, he used up all the money that he saved to buy a book from a beggar who claims that it'll give him great powers. Instead of going to school and becoming a doctor, Singh decided to practice Kung Fu as he wanted to protect the world from evil. One day, he sees a mute girl being bullied by a group of young boys and orders them to stop. 
Singh decides to help her by using his kung fu, but quickly gets beat up and knocked to the floor. The boys embarrass him and laughs at his efforts and leaves the two defeated on the ground. Ever since that day, Sing decided that good people can never win in this world and swears to be a bad person in order to succeed. He sees an ice cream car and runs towards it, pretending to be a customer, but runs away quickly after grabbing the cones, leaving the girl to chase after them hopelessly as Sing laughs at her efforts. Meanwhile, Brother Sum has decided to hire professional killers to take vengeance on the people from the Pigstay Valley. The two men appears to be blind, but their names are notorious in the criminal world as they're known to kill their enemies using their music. When the advisor flatters them by calling the assassins the strongest killers, they decline with humility, claiming that another man known as the Beast is much more powerful, but currently locked up in the asylum. At night, one of the fighters decides to leave the village to avoid any more trouble, but sees a musician playing his instrument. The man begins walking away from the music, as objects behind him are cut into pieces by the sound waves. He quickly realizes that something is wrong, but fails to react in time as the assassin decapitates him. At the same time, the tailor is ambushed by the second musician and forced to fight back as they exchange blows. The two are equally matched in close combat, and their struggle eventually causes them to crash out from the buildings, where the first musician is waiting for them. The blind man starts attacking the tailor using the sound waves and sends him flying across the field. Before the man can be killed by the continuous attacks, the restaurant owner shows up and saves the tailor. The fighter is able to counter the enemy's attacks more efficiently using the spear, and he throws all the weapons towards the assassins. Donut flies towards the incoming waves as he deflects the attacks, getting closer towards the opponents as the music intensifies. The man is able to reach the musicians with the last weapon, but hits a force field that stops the attack and gets knocked away by the enemy's counter. The musicians regain their position and continues to fire without mercy, and the tailor pushes Donut away from danger but fatally damaging himself in the process. Before the two are killed by the onslaught, the waves are dispersed by the shouting of the landlady. The assassins realize that there's another powerful entity here and tries to pursue the woman, but are stopped quickly by the landlord who descends from the sky. The assassins try to punch the men, but their attacks bounce off the landlord's body and causes them to hit each other instead. The landlord grabs onto the two men and begins throwing them in a circle, eventually tossing them away like ragdolls. The assassins recover and tries to use their most powerful attack, turning the sound waves into skeleton warriors that fly towards the men. The landlady steps in and counters using her shouting technique, scattering the demons into pieces and blasting the musicians away. When the fight is over, the people in the town tries to save the heroes, but two of them died already and Dona eventually succumbs to his wounds as well. The next day, Singh tries to bully a passenger on the train, but proceeds to get beat up repeatedly and thrown off the vehicle like a common beggar. He blames his brother for not being evil enough and complains that they haven't killed anyone after so many days, questioning how they can join the gangsters like this. He sees the ice cream girl again and rushes towards her, demanding that she give him all her money and throwing her on the ground. Singh grabs the girl a second time and threatens her with a knife, but only sees tears falling from her eyes. Bo manages to find the money inside the cart and they grab the coins and prepare to run, but Singh notices the girl using sign language to communicate with him and becomes aware of who she really is. The girl shows Singh the lollipop from years ago and reveals that she was in fact the mule girl who the main character tried to save when they were kids. Upon realizing the truth, the man feels terrible and he smashes the lollipop onto the floor before running away. Before Singh can reflect on his mistakes, he's taken in by the gangsters and brought towards Brother Sum, who tells him that he's part of the gang now and gives him a new mission. The man is brought to a psychiatric hospital, and the advisor tells him to break out a killer who's kept in the deepest part of the building. Singh rushes towards the hospital and makes it inside, eventually arriving underground where the hallway is filled with frogs. He picks the lock and opens the metal door, only to see an old man sitting on the toilet. They bring back the person and the gangsters have trouble believing that this is the legendary killer who's called the Beast. The advisor explains that their leader wants the man to kill two people and are willing to pay anything, but doubts that the old man is actually the right person. The gangster pulls out a gun and points it towards the man, but he quickly takes the weapon away and points it towards his own head. The man pulls the trigger and fires, but amazingly, he's able to catch the bullet using only two fingers, while everyone watches in amazement. The beast turns towards the walls and stomps on the floor using incredible power, blasting a giant hole through the room as everyone in the casino run for their lives. The killer leaps forward and sees the opponents waiting for him beside the table, who turns out to be the landlady and the landlord, coming here to destroy the Axe Gang forever. 
The couple shows the gangsters the funeral bell that they brought as a gift, causing Brother Sum to scream at them with anger. The woman kicks the killer from below, splitting the table in half, while her husband kicks the man directly on the face, but they're not able to move the beast at all. The two regroups and jumps towards the enemy, attacking with their combined efforts, but are quickly knocked back and sent flying into the air. The killer begins striking the husband using incredible speed, while the man desperately tries to evade the punches, but failing at the last moment and gets knocked towards the walls. The woman flies in and begins using her shouting technique, sending a shockwave that knocks away everything, but only manages to push the enemy backwards a little bit. The killer laughs at her efforts and proceeds to attack the woman without mercy, sending her across the room. Seeing that the opponent is vastly more powerful, the landlady goes to the giant belt that they brought and hits it on the top with immense force, breaking open the giant metal. The woman turns the belt into a massive amplifier and begins using her lion's roar, sending a massive shockwave towards the enemy as it destroys everything in sight. The attack was so powerful that it sends the beast flying backwards alongside everything else, as it generates a tornado inside the building that rips apart the entire room. Surprisingly, the killer was able to survive as he crawls on the ground, but the couple jumps in and prepares to fire a second round. However, the enemy quickly admits defeat and begs for mercy, but when the couple lowers their guard, the man attacks them using the flower daggers and stabs them in the stomach. The three are quickly tangled up in a stalemate as they struggle to attack the opponent's weak spots. The gang leader sees this and immediately tells Sing to strike the couple on the head using a wooden bat. The main character hesitates to attack, but eventually decides to hit the killer right on the head, causing the men to break free in a surge of fury that throws the couple away. The killer throws the main character onto the floor and punches the man's face with anger, knocking his head into the ground. However, the beast quickly notices something wrong and sees that the couple has disappeared, and realizes that they took Sing with them as well. The couple takes the man back to the Pigstay Valley and tries to help him by using medical herbs and bandages, but are surprised to see that Sing is somehow still alive even after sustaining such damage. They speculate that the only way the main character is not dead must be because the damages actually awaken the man's hidden powers. At the same time, the gangsters have arrived at the Pigstay Valley that's completely abandoned by the residents, and the beast finds the remains of bandages where it looks like a giant cocoon has been hatched. The gangsters walk out from the buildings, and the killer is surprised to see that Sing is still alive even after getting beat to near death. The mob charges at the main character and tries to kill him using their weapons, but their attacks are quickly evaded as Sing knocks them flying using little efforts. He kicks the gangsters across the field as they land onto the lower platform. The criminals try to surround the fighter and attack him altogether, but Sing demonstrates superhuman abilities and proceeds to kick the man through the buildings. The gangsters try to escape and run towards the beast, but they're defeated quickly one by one, eventually only leaving Sing and the killer still standing. The main character punches the enemy in the face and kicks him in the stomach, causing the opponent to fly downwards onto the floor, but is surprised to see that the man is barely damaged from the furious attacks. He then tries attacking the enemy using a barrage of punches, but the strikes are quickly stopped by the opponent as the old man is able to catch the flying hands. Sing steps on the man's feet, causing him to scream in agony. He then proceeds with a devastating kick that knocks the man onto the ground and punches him across the field. The killer decides to switch techniques and begins imitating a frog as he lays on the ground. The man launches towards Sing with incredible speed and knocks him through the buildings, crashing into the walls. The hero tries to run towards higher grounds as he leaps across the floors, but the beast locks onto his movements and launches at the man, sending him into the sky. The attack was so powerful that Sing disappeared into the atmospheres. The man continues flying outwards, but eventually slows down as he regains control over his momentum and looks upon the sky, where he sees a giant Buddha formed by the clouds. Sing closes the palms and begins flying downwards, picking up incredible speed as he charges towards the beast. The man's palms begin catching on fire, and the flames quickly engulf his entire body. The killer feels something wrong as he senses the immense pressure coming from the sky and sees what appears to be a meteorite falling towards him. Sing uses the Buddha's palm technique which makes a gigantic crater under the opponent, crushing him with enormous gravity from above. The beast quickly begs for mercy and Sing pulls back the attack while flying across the sky. Just like before, the killer tries to ambush the main character using the same dagger, but Sing quickly counters and strikes right behind the man, breaking apart the entire building in the process. After seeing the incredible power difference between the two, the killer surrenders and kneels before Sing, finally admitting defeat like never before. 
Sometimes later, the ice cream girl pushes her cart across the street and sees a newly opened candy shop in the city. She goes to the front and sees that Bong is now working as the assistant for the store. Sing notices the girl right away and quickly goes towards her while smiling at his friend. The girl returns the warmness as she sees that Sing has finally become his true self. They begin remembering how they were when they saw each other for the first time, and Sing welcomes the girl into the store with happiness. So what do you guys think about this movie? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.